Born in Scottish Cliff in the Boer Cup, Karima Isaacs has moved from Cape Town to Josie and then to Dubai. She eventually became a project manager for a multinational oil company. But wherever she's traveled, she's kept in touch with the traditional Cape Malay style cooking of her childhood. At the same time, she's also embarked on what she's called a mystical spice odyssey, which has taken her to Kerala and her cooking to a new level. Zaki met up with Karima in Cape Town recently, where she shared her thoughts on life, spice and traditional treats. Cape Town's historic Burkarp draws thousands of visitors every year. But for Karima Isaacs, this was a homecoming. Her love of Cape Malay style cuisine and cooking in general began here, and she wanted to explore the new and old aspects of the district once more. A popular Burkarp cafe shares her affection and respect for heritage, and she found a kindred spirit in the proprietor, Glenn Muller. Hi, Glenn. So nice to meet you. Thank you. Likewise. It's my first time here, and I'm really, really taken with the fact that you're paying homage to your mum. Yes. When I look at her, then I you know, start getting a bit of butterflies because how do we preserve legacy when someone is no longer here? We do it by loving their values, and she had beautiful values of compassion and kindness. There's something else that I noticed, and that's the artwork on the wall, because I think it really captures the essence of work up and when I was growing up here. So have a seat, and then we'll be with you shortly. I'm very much looking forward to meeting Karima Isaacs as I am a huge fan of her cookery books. When I popped onto her website, I saw three intriguing options which read Cape Town, my heart, Boerkarp, my soul and Dubai, my home. This offered a truly intriguing insight into Karima and her relationship with these three places and it's something that we will explore during our time together. Karishma recommended the Café Zor as a great place to meet for breakfast and judging by the aroma that's coming from the kitchen, our host Glenn Miller has something very special in store for Karima and me. Morning! Karima! Hi, so nice to meet you. Hi. Karima, you call Burkhap your soul. Why is that? I grew up here. Everything about this place gave me purpose. There was such a sense of community here. I remember walking the streets of Burkhap with my father, so just such beautiful memories. Oh, oh wow, Glenn. More breakfast. Glenn, this looks absolutely scrumptious. Thank you so much for having us. Enjoy, guys. Thank you. What are some of your fondest memories of growing up in the Boer Cup? All of the traditions that we had in Boer Cup. Getting my shoes for Eid, Eid dresses, going to all of the neighbours to wish them. Ramadan I loved as well. Karima, your father inspired your passion for cooking. How did this come about? My fondest memories of his is actually in the kitchen, listening to him talk about his life and how he grew up. And most of that was either stories about District 6 or Boerka. Your first book is called Cooking for My Father in My Cape Malay Kitchen. What inspired this book? My dad passed away a few years ago and I was actually in Dubai at the time and I thought the only way to preserve his legacy was through a book. His philosophy, not just about food, but about people were that we just simply become nicer and friendlier to each other when we sit down together to eat. So I've kind of discovered myself through writing this book. Karima, what for you is the essence of Cape Malay cuisine? Cape Malay cuisine can't be cooked without love. And if you are going to eat, you have to eat with someone, never alone. Karima, I would love it if you could show me Burkhap through your eyes. Let's finish this first. Of course. I used to walk these streets with my dad all of the time and there'd always be aunties standing out on the balcony. Everyone who comes to the Boer Cup knows the pink lady. I mean, it's basically here for people's photo shoots. Okay. <laughs> the outward appearance of the pink lady leaves no doubt that she's an exuberant extrovert. But once you step inside, her interior spaces resonate with warm hospitality and eclectic elegance. Axel, thank you for well, having us. Well, welcome. Hi, Axel. So, so good, nice to meet good you. Good to meet you. <laughs> Please, come in. <laughs> wow. Please make yourself at home. Thank you so much for having Pleasure. me. Pleasure. All of these houses actually used to be white. From what I understand, all of the homes were painted different colours after slavery was abolished. I had no idea. Karima, you grew up in the city, but Dubai is now your home. Why do you call Cape Town your heart? It's because there's a vibrancy that you feel when you are in Cape Town. Dubai is 
a concrete jungle, but I love living there now. But I think there's a lot of Cape Town in Dubai. We kind of like the same things in that you sit together, you eat together, there's a lot of socializing going on, but Cape Town is still my heart. Zach, let's finish our tour. These colored houses are the tourist attraction, but the heart and soul of work up is over there. This is, for me, the essence of work up, and my home is here. We lived at number seven, and on that corner used to live Auntie Van der Skaif. And this house was Auntie Fatima and Buta Kasim, who looked after me when my grandmother went out shopping or my mom was working. But every single auntie here knew the family. On the stoops, you'd always have an auntie sitting on the outside, gossiping. I feel like I've come home. The park over there is the park that we played in. There's just a vibration that you can feel under your feet when you walk here. Karima, I have been loving exploring the old Boer Carp with you, but there are some newer gems I would love to show you. I can't wait to see them. Hi! Hi! Karima! I'm Abby. Hi. I'm Karima. So come nice in. to meet you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you both here. OK, come out to my studio. We're doing something unusual today in the studio. Wow. <laughs> my niece, Belle, she's designing a bracelet for one of our workers. So ladies, have a look around and I'm here if you need me. Thank you. Hi. Karima, Abby is an avid traveller and I know you are too. What have been some of your favourite destinations? Istanbul, for sure. I loved uh, Turkey, obviously the food. I also loved Azerbaijan. Desserts, they are just awesome. I know I keep on talking about food, but that's usually what draws me to the country anyway. Well, I think you should definitely get these. And I want these. <laughs> Zach, you cannot leave work up without sampling the food at Bismillah restaurant. You are the boss. This is a kaleidoscope of all of the recipes and dishes that I absolutely adore. You must try this. You don't have to ask me twice. <laughs> so this is a sweet yellow rice with traditional Cape Malay babuati. And you can actually see the egg custard layer and the mince layer at the bottom. It's just lovely. Karima, what has moving to Dubai offered you on a personal and professional level? From a business perspective, it's grown me at a corporate level. Now I get to sit around the boardroom table and negotiating at an international level. At a personal level, I think there's been so much growth. I left for Dubai in search of something different and I started appreciating where I came from more. And everyone feels the same. All of us yearn to eat food from our home. Karima, how would you describe your approach to cooking? Let's finish up here and then I've got a surprise in store for you. I love surprises. So this is your surprise. We're making traditional Cape Malay Kus Sisters. Well, Kus Sisters are my absolute favorite. We're going to need some eggs, sugar, and once the sugar is added, we'll whisk that until all of the sugar is dissolved. Now we're going to add in our spices to our flour. First one we're adding is aniseed. Next is the cinnamon, and that's got a, a really nice warm fragrance. And then we've got some cardamom and some dry ground ginger. We'll be adding the yeast. And then lastly, just the baking powder. And that will just help to make the sister nice and fluffy. I'm just going to stir this through. Zach, maybe you can just pass me the warm milk with the melted butter, and we'll add that to the flour mixture. OK, what we're going to add last now is our egg and sugar mixture that you did. Awesome. Now you really have to get your back into this. This is hard work. Once you have a nice smooth batter, this just gets set aside for about half an hour until it's nice and fluffy. And then we start shaping the kusista. Karima, how would you describe your approach to cooking? My approach to cooking is all about what I feel inside because I cook with my soul, I cook with my heart because when you cook and you serve whatever you've cooked to someone, they're actually tasting a little part of you. But I think our sisters are ready to be shaped. We're going to need a well-floured surface and also well-floured hands. So we'll just grab a little ball and you get a bit of an oval shape. Do you want to give it a shot? 
Tuck. Okay, let me get my hands okay. done. So just pull. And roll. Wow. This is good. That's so good. Excellent. Really? Well, that one's got character, so... Okay. <laughs> get that flower on, on your hands. Okay. Make a little ball. Fat. Okay, so that's the last one. So we're gonna get these to the pot and then fry them. Wow. We're just going to take these warm little puffy sisters and then put them into the hot syrup. Take the fork, stir them in until they are glistening. And Zach, I might need your help here. So you can just take some of that desiccated coconut and sprinkle them all over. Now that's Cape Malay love. So Zach, we always share this with friends and family. Well, let's share them with our poor cop community. Karima, thank you so much for such a sweet, sweet day. I oh, know, this was so awesome. I loved cooking with you, by the way. <laughs> okay, these are so deliciously one. sticky. Shall we? Hi. Abby, just a sweet treat to thank you for being so sweet to us early on. Oh, thank you. Thank okay, you, bye. <laughs> Glenn, we made you some fresh Kuss sisters to say thank you so much for this morning. Thank you, guys. <laughs> Axel, we have a little treat to say thank you so much for having us earlier on. So sweet of you. Thank, <laughs> thank you, you so, so much. much. Thank, thank you. Take care. Bye.